Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of Walk in Faith. We're in the Opera House and today I'm sitting down with Luis Cunelli, who's an Argentinian CEO and philanthropist who's hosting the first ever Vitae Summit at the Vatican. Luis, thank you so much for traveling from Argentina to from LA and back to New York. Thank you very much. You. It's a pleasure Thanks to meet coming. you. Yeah. You know, when Alexis called me and I read a, some of the articles and she told me about this summit and the vision, it reminded me of, of the work that we do at the Emmaus Center and the work of trying to take or connect the celebrities or the artists to the world of faith. It's like a bridge that we're trying to create. And when I saw and I read the article, I said, we have a lot in common. So tell me, yeah. what, was the, the, what was the inspiration behind Vitae and tell me about the mission. Well, uh, the mission of Vitae is to share universal values through arts, mass media, and entertainment industry. The vision behind Vitae Summit started in um, 2013, the first time I was in, in the Vatican City. I visited Vatican museums and I thought, whoa, this is, there are great pieces of art here. It shows how powerful was our art for the world. We need to connect all the art has today with the church again. We started that year to think about how we can put all the leaders in the art, in the entertainment industry, in one room with the Pope and start the conversation about how we can change the conversation, how we can change the culture with the principles of the Bible. Mm. And when you first had this idea, did you have the opportunity to sit down with the Holy Father and, and sort of bounce ideas off him, or was it something you sort of conceptualized and then reached out to him? Well, Holy Father knew about our job in 2017, and we had the opportunity to have a private meeting with him. He invited us to Rome, and we came there, and we started explaining to him all the projects we were producing, like TV series, movies, festivals, all in the Latin world. Uh, he got very excited, and, I, and suddenly we started a kind of a brainstorming session with the Pope, saying, why, well, we need to do this and this. You need to know that the Queen of Spain is a good friend of mine, and, and, and the King of Netherlands, and he, he was talking about people, like, I, I am, I'm dropping. talking there, my friend from two blocks from here, yeah. you know, <laughs> but with, with the Pope's agenda, well, let's visit the Queen, and, oh and we, we went to visit the, the Queen of Spain, she, she received us in a very moment. kindly way, he, she's very interested in our job, is supporting us. Well, from that point, that first meeting with the Pope, obviously things changed, and changed a lot. Uh, in a good way, we started to have meetings around the world with s several things. So. But, but the beginning of Vitae Summit was this first visit to the Vatican Museums. I, I like how you, you say, how, like, you know, you're meeting with the Pope, the Holy Father. I mean, I met him, you know, Monsignor Harrington, actually a friend of mine introduced me to him at the airport. But when I met him, it was powerful. Yeah. It wasn't like meeting someone, you know, just down yeah, the block. But yeah. And the way you referenced the Pope, and then he opened up his phone, he called the Queen. I mean, it was like you're on a, a celebrity shock tank, you know, where it's like yeah, they're investing yeah. in your project. In some way, in a very Argentinian way. You know, uh, Argentinians, we have a lot of Italian culture, but we speak in Spanish. So we have the accent of the Italians, but they speak in Spanish. <laughs> it's something we are, we move hands like me yeah, now. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but, uh, uh, the let's call the Queen. And, uh, yeah. it's a, and he just got on the phone and just called him, dialed yeah, him. Yeah, Let me text like the that, Queen. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, the, the Pope is cool. I mean, you know, he's really, there's just something about him, the Holy Spirit, right? He's, there's something, calling, you know, the president or, is one thing, but does he have the ability to influence them? Do they listen to him yeah. when he, what was it like when he called the queen or he called some of these celebrity friends of his? Yeah, well, he's very strategic. There are some funny stories. For example, in that first meeting, uh, we were talking about Angela Merkel, the prime minister of Germany. And we were talking about her, oh yeah, it's very interesting. She said that the solution for Europe, for the challenges they, they have is to return to Christianity again, to the roots of Europe. So we were talking about this, well, yeah, you need to meet the ambassador of, the, of Germany here in, in, the, in the Vatican. It was the instruction from the Pope. And we said, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> we finished the, the meeting and we immediately go to the to the church, to the, it was a, in a Protestant church in, 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 in Rome, and we ring the bell to the pastor, <laughs> hello, <laughs> we are uh, the, the team of Vitae, and we are visiting you because the Pope sent us to visit you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he will laugh. <laughs> He's not going to say no to that. Okay, and he came, opened the door in, in, in shorts and, and a t-shirt, hello, oh, wow. come, come on in. <laughs> yeah, come you had tea, your coffee, and you just... Yeah, yeah, exactly, well, in a very, very uh, spontaneous way, and... Uh, 
And we finally met Angela Merkel in that case, but the uh, Ministry of Culture and Communications in Berlin. And it was the beginning of our job in, in Germany. So he's very strategic too. It's not necessarily a straight way. He knows all the ways and all, all the complexity of these environments. We visited the, the Queen of Spain. She received us in a very kind way. We were explaining to her all the things we were doing and she's very interested. The, the thing we found is global leaders are interesting and have some concerns about things that are happening and they not necessarily know how to deal with that. And we think that with the principles we believe, there are answers to that. I agree. Yeah, Culture is. is really changing so quickly and dramatically. I mean, I've been to Brazil, Spain, Madrid, and you see the impact. Like, I think we were in Madrid first time I went and the Pope was there. And we were there with the Pope for World Youth Day and there was a lot of pushback, a lot. And I wasn't expecting that Brazil, like, you travel to these countries and we assumed we were going to be accepted and you saw the young, especially the young, the, the persecution that we were receiving wow. from being in these, these places that we were trying to spread the gospel. You yeah. know, we're called to carry our cross. I mean, we know that, that it's going to be yeah. persecution. So I know you say it like jolly, but I mean, what you're trying to do is change culture in, in, a, in a world that doesn't necessarily accept it, especially in, in arts and culture. I mean, yeah. Hollywood, and if you say just that term, you know, there's big business that that want to oppose the truth. They have yeah. their own agenda, or their own forces. Yeah. So how do you sort of maneuver and balance all that, knowing that you're trying to change culture? Yeah, we think that uh, we need to talk about the principles mainly. We need to talk about the first step in the, in the basic things. We're going to talk about the people, about the gospel, with all the complexity for non-believers. We need to talk about first uh, about beauty, how to bring beauty again, how to bring hope again, how to bring encounter again. This is the main challenges we are having today in the world. You know, there are a lot of polarization, there are a lot of negative messages, there is a lot of division. And this is really a, a problem, you know, it's a challenge for the whole humanity. I think humanity is looking for answers for the challenges we are facing now. Mm -hmm. And we think we have some answers for for them, but possibly, well, the thing is we need to talk in the same language, the language yes. they understand. Exactly, you're right. I was reading an encyclical the other day, and it was the Vatican II one, and if you read, it was 60s or 50s, the, the wording, he's talking about equity. He's talking about the same challenges we face now, and I think non-believers, if they were to read and really understand how the church, the gospel, they're trying to connect and not you know, create division. If they understood that, I think more people would see, you know, the church or faith or religion or the gospels differently. Because the church is really there to foster and to bring people in, unite people, not divide exactly. and separate. Exactly. But there's this, this, you know, miscommunication that's going on. And you read the Pope's, you know, the encyclicals. He wrote that. I'm, I'm reading this. This is not you know, someone's interpretation. This is the Pope saying we need to be united Absolutely. through the gospel, through Christ. Yeah, I think we lost, well, obviously, challenges like, like the pandemic and important things that happened in the last years. And we are losing the ability of being uh, in the same table, different people, uh, knowing each other, understanding our situations, and, uh, and finding common things mm -hmm. to have a better world. Dialogue, communication, having the ability to listen to the other person is something pretty important and we are losing that. And we believe that this is the process of Jesus. He was a good listener. He oh, was yeah. an excellent storyteller. Uh, it's a process of giving love, not fighting with the other person. And we are now in an era of fighting. We are fighting each other, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we think this is not the way. You're right, too. I mean, first of all, Jesus was definitely a great listener. He was so present when he listened. But, too, it's like I did something on sports. I used sport to yep. create a conversation. So you and I might see the world differently, but we agree on sports, let's say. So if we talk about sports, we find a common ground. Then I can see past our differences, and I can see we're brothers and sisters in Christ, or I find love. Because in the end, we're all the same, right? We're all made in the image of God. So tell me about the summit. I've been to a summit at, at the Vatican with my friend Vinny. Vinny's probably watching. Tell me about this summit. What is it like? How many, how many days is it? Tell us a little. And who's actually coming? Because I didn't get an invitation, and Monsignor Jamie didn't get one. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the Vitae Summit is happening 
on August 31st and uh, September the 1st. We are going to start Wednesday with um, a private visit to the Vatican Museums, then a, a time of reflection in the 16th Chapel, and then a private dinner. And the second day on Thursday, we are going to start the sessions with the artists and the Pope in the Academy of Science uh, inside the, the Vatican, the place where the pri Nobel Prizes mm -hmm. typically uh, have meeting theirs. And we are going to start the process of reflection, identifying the challenges we are having today. Well, we start to think about the strategies and what kind of things we can do together in order to have more impact. Because there are a lot of artists doing really beautiful things, very important things, but we think that to change the culture we need to work together. Is this open to the public? Is this private? What is it? It's, it's a private uh, event. We are going Will you be sitting there. in at, at... Yeah, well, we are going to be sitting there with the 25 artists and, and the Pope. But we are going to arrive to conclusions that are going to be public. That was one of the things too, is when we went, it was, one, it was the owner of the Giants, it was the owner of uh, Harlem Globetrotters. We sat in a meeting, it was about 12, 15 of us, and we all spoke, we had an action plan. But then the communication afterwards wasn't, we didn't all follow through, so to speak. How are you gonna stay connected with some of these artists? And can you name some of the celebrities or artists that are gonna be attending? Well, we are going to have uh, Denzel Washington there, um, mm. Andrea Bocelli, ah. Hayley Adwell, Debbie Oyelowo, uh, people from Asia, uh, wow. Dan Lin. Well, Craig Syracuse, is he on the list? Craig yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people from Latin America, from wow. Mexico too. It's going to be a very diverse group. It's not necessarily a Catholic event. Of course. It's, it's, it's in the Vatican, it's with the Pope that is Catholic. But it's a global leader and we are inviting different kind of people with their own faith and we, we, are, we are going to talk about how to change the culture. This thing you mentioned is very important because uh, it's necessarily a process, not just only an event. In fact, this is the first event of a series of events we are going to have because there are a lot of artists doing great things. The challenge was to put all the schedules in the same day and time. Very you know, yeah, we are talking about a listers that are that have contracts and are filming and doing recording music in, in, in with different commitments. It's a process. I mean, you're always welcome to, to host it in Brooklyn. I, I could say Excellent. from experience, this neighborhood needs Jesus a lot. I mean, this is a very interesting, diverse community. You know, we're in Williamsburg. I mean, there's artists everywhere. We host concerts, events, galas, everything. And, and this neighborhood especially needs Jesus. Thank you. I mean, Thank they you. do. So you're always welcome. Yeah, but New York is possibly the most influenced uh, city in the world. So yeah, we are not thinking only to have summits in the Vatican, but in other important cities of the world too. Yeah, and, and like you said too, here's a little bit easier to get to as well. <laughs> you know, the, the Vatican, the Vatican could be challenging, but you're always welcome to, to host something here. Luis, we're gonna take a quick break. Guys, we'll be right back with a new episode of Walk in Faith. Welcome back to Walk in Faith. Luis, thank you so much. So let's talk about some of the artists for a second, right? So I believe, and you probably believe the same thing, that the gift comes from God, right? We get a gift and it's our job to sort of, to not create that, but just, you know, manifest that gift. And then we use that gift to bring people to Christ, evangelize, inspire through, like Denzel Washington does, mm -hmm. or some of these artists. But at some point, sometimes the business itself could change or manipulate that initial goal, right? 
how do we stay true and how does an artist stay true to what the true calling is? So I have a gift to inspire, but how do I stay true to that and not be, you know, sucked into the business of Hollywood, say? Interesting question. It's, it's a complex answer because, uh, well, you know, uh, there are a lot of, of tensions, but we think that we can manage that tensions. The main thing is to be together. I, I come from a, my Latin American culture and environment, but one thing that we discovered when we arrived the first time to Hollywood, where the, the majority of the artists that are invited, because you know that the, 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 the U.S. has the, the main market and the more influential market mm -hmm. in the world, so the majority of the invitees are Americans. One thing we discovered there is a lot of isolation. There are not groups, there is no community, and you know that the basic principles of the Bible and church is being together. Uh, the opposite of that is being alone, and it's a huge risk. So first thing and goal of the summit is to be together, to mm -hmm. start the kind of a sense of community. You yeah. No, you're right. And then too, some of the celebrities, I've, I've interviewed a lot of them about their faith, and I'm saying off camera, Whenever I ask them questions about faith, especially on the carpet, their eyes open. I mean, I can give you a thousand examples, right? Dr. Oz, Nelly, I mean, the list go on, Ted Danson. And the minute you ask them a question about faith, they open up and they go, nobody's ever asked me that before. Because they don't have the ability and they want to share. Because I, we think of it like this, most of us have that time in my life. I prayed for success, whatever that is. And then I hit a rough patch. I'm crying out to someone, God, right? And he blesses me. I'm able to overcome that adversity and I never forget that moment when I was at my lowest point and he saved me. And every celebrity that I've interviewed, Martin Sheen, Joe Estevez, Mark Wahlberg, they all have the same path, right? Start off, a little success, they hit the rock bottom, no one's there from God saves them and then the rest of their life they, they, they share their testimony. Yeah. But then they go into Hollywood of the world and they have to keep it separate. But they wanna express. Yeah. So some of the celebrities, they say, well, I got to keep it separate because it could affect my income, my job, my brand, my platform. Yeah. So you're going to have to navigate. But how, I mean, do you think that they will, like Denzel Washington has publicly said, I only want to do powerful, inspirational films, Mark Wahlberg too. I mean, do you think that they'll be able to navigate through Hollywood and, and be able to proclaim and bring people together? We need to think in a strategic way. We are living in a complex world, but it happened in the times of Jesus too. He has different levels of communications. He tells beautiful stories to the crowd, you know, in, in very basic terms. And he uh, speaks in a more complex way in the synagogue. The thing is, we need to develop long strategy, macro strategies for sharing our principles in the right way depending on the different instances we are. We talk internally in Vitae, the funnel, you know? Yes. You have very general and massive uh, level of communication and then you have other levels going deeper and more explicit. And it's not only a matter of communication and producing different things, it's a matter of being connected with the church and other organizations and ministry to do a collaborative work in order to redeem the culture again. It's not an event is not a product, it's a long-term strategy, yes. a macro strategy, like other organizations have too. Uh, this is the thing we think we need to, to develop all together. How do you gauge the success? Like I always joke, there's no KPI in the Holy Spirit, right? We don't know. I can do an event and I can have a thousand people and reach one, or I can do, have 10 people and reach none. How do you know that you're changing culture, altering culture, reaching people? How do you measure that? There are some KPIs, for example, market share, one way of measuring what you are doing and the impact you have. We need to think mainly around the time. It's not only, well, next year we are going to convert some amount of people. We need to sow the seed continuously mm -hmm. and uh, we are going to see the results. I like that. It becomes like a lifestyle. It's not yeah, it's and we, we need to wait for the results. Uh, uh, it's a process. We need to think about the process. We are in, in an area we are accustomed to have all immediately, but we are talking about lives. We are talking about transformation of a heart, and this yes. is a process. One thing, too, which has changed in culture in general, the domestic church. 
So when I was a kid, right, I had to go to church. My mother said, yeah. no church well, and no go show. outside. Yeah. So I always make the joke, I had asthma, so every Sunday I had an asthma attack, but then I was healed, the Holy Spirit came and healed me, so I was able to go outside. She caught on, but the point is that it was so powerful, you had to go to church. Everything was re related around church. Now, some of the parents, they don't know why their kids don't go to church, and then I ask them, do you go to church? And they say, no, I don't go to church. So the, the foundation of faith has sort of changed. You yeah. know, and Sunday, I say it's not just a Sunday thing. You can't just go to church on Sunday and expect to have a relationship with Christ. And if it's yeah. not part of the household, usually kids walk away. And I see that in this community all the time where kids say, I used to be, I used to, I was, and they all, they all dot, dot, dots. Like I was Baptist, I was Catholic, I was Christian. Yeah. And they walked away from the church because they didn't have that proper foundation. So a lot of this I think starts from when they're young, right? The yeah. parents have to implement this. Why are you involved in this? I mean, and you, you know you're going to hit a lot of, you know, obstacles, storms, adversity. It's, it's a calling. I have a call to evangelize through art, mass media, and the ministry. This is the reason why I found an organization that whose mission is evangelized through art, mass media, and the ministry. Uh, we are focused on the macro long-term strategies that are missing because we are still champions in a local context but we feel that we need to focus on adding value in that dimension, in the global macro strategy to do things. Because, you know, in, in this globalized world, you can be a, a champion in a local context, but you have strong forces in the global yes. dimension. And you, we need to, to work on that because if not, the war is a little I tough. Agree. That's one thing that has always been a challenge is all of us working together. You know, I belong with the Fatherhood Co-Commission, which is an evangelical group, uh, Chick-fil-A, and we come together. Oh, well. It's with the Kendrick brothers, a lot of leaders in the NFL, and we come together and we find yeah. strategies on how to eliminate fatherlessness. There are a lot of these groups, but then they become silos. I think what you're doing is fantastic. If we can connect them, especially through power of the artist, entertainment, these sort of role models, if they use that platform for the right reasons to evangelize, unite, I really think we could change the world. I really yeah. do. Yeah, we are going to do it all together. Yeah. It's not a matter and of, you got of the Pope, Bitae. You have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, you, and like you said, you have no, there's all pure intentions. This is not something just because it's an opportunity or a job or for you to hang out with celebrities. This is your calling. God Absolutely. bless you. It's a vision that started in 2013. Wow. It is important to be persistent and, and keep that things that you know that you need. We need to be persistent in our callings and things suddenly happen. Oh, yeah. oh man, and that voice comes all, the other day I got a voice who was like, you should retire, Craig. And I'm like, really, I'm only 42. <laughs> no, 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 come on, and I'm like, I'm like retire, that's not please. God, that's no. the enemy. He said, yeah. you should just give it all up. And I'm like, no, I'm not there yet. I'm well, not think about Jesus. He chose to, to be a man, being God was 30 years preparing, preparing his, uh, himself and he changed the world. The world. Oh. He changed the world in only three years, but three years of preparation, why? Persistence, long-term preparation is uh, God's terminology. The stress and the struggle that comes along with when you're trying to change the culture of the world, you know, it's, it's challenging. I know for me, sometimes it's challenging where I'm like, you're lo it's lonely. Yeah. You, you wake up at three in the morning with the can't figure it out and the anxiety and then the voice always comes saying, you can do this, you can try something else. And, you know, being a leader is, is like you, it's, it's, it's stressful. There's a lot of pressure that comes yeah. along and we know that we surrender it over. And I think about just one more day, one more month, one more day, yeah. and you just keep moving forward. How can people get involved or, or find out more about your organization? Our social networks are follow Vitae, and our webpage is www.vitae.global, not com, global. Global. Yeah. Yeah, I so saw you're also on LinkedIn. I was looking at your stuff yesterday. Wow, excellent. <laughs> well, Luis, it's been a pleasure. I really, you know, maybe I'll join you in Rome. I don't know. We got to yeah. see. Welcome. But um, I, I really appreciate you coming all the way here to, to Brooklyn. Oh, thank you. God Craig. bless you. It was thank a you pleasure. very much. Thank you. God thank bless you very you. much. Thank you. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Walk in Faith. Always remember, you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through your words and actions. God bless you.